Do you already know Java or some object-oriented programming language and yet you're still earning less than six figures? Here's why you're probably leaving multiple six figures on the table per year. Let me make that clear. If you're making 80 grand, you're probably leaving 50, 100, 150 grand per year on the table. And by the way, if you're watching this video and you're like, there's no way somebody's in that position, then great. That means you're the lucky one and you've gone past that. But for those of you who is like, wait a second, I know Python, I know Java, I know C++ or C Sharp, and, and I'm making 80 grand a year, 60 grand a year. This is for you because the truth is you are severely underpaid. And now that we are heading into the world of data, then the good news here is that you can go not just to your next job, but to a better job. And all you have to do is upskill and do a little bit of tweaks to your skills gap and your resume. So for those of you that don't know me, my name is Chris Garzone. I'm the founder and CEO of Data Engineer Academy. We've been at this for three years, helped over a thousand people transition into higher paying data roles. I myself was a data engineer at Amazon, at Lyft, at a few startups. I invested in some data companies myself. And our mission here at Data Engineer Academy is to help people just like you, tech professionals, upskill their skill sets in the data space so that you can be future proof and ready to go in this new era of AI. So let's jump into it because in this video, I'm going to show you a Java developer, a Python developer, why it is that you're underpaid and how is it that you can boom, accelerate your career to the next level as quickly as possible. So part one, the reason that Java developers or Python developers, anybody that has object oriented programming language is at a huge advantage is because you already have a lot of the conceptual knowledge that is needed to be a great data engineer. For example, you probably already understand APIs, microservices, distributed systems, multi-threading, you know how to use GitHub, you know how to put PRs in place, right? You know, push documentation out to other engineers that are actually formatted the correct way. You have all of these foundational skills that software engineers know, and yet most data engineers might not actually know it. So here's a little fun fact, way more than 50% of the current data engineers out there don't even have a computer science background. They typically come from an analyst background or a math background or an economics background, and they just figured out that data was important and they were able to go with the flow. But you, you might actually have a comp sci background or some sort of object oriented programming language knowledge that is able to get you there as quickly as possible, right? So. The benefit is that you've already done 70% of the work to get there. Now you just need to figure out what 30% you're missing and how to execute that as quickly as possible. So part number two, you have to figure out where you are in the market. And so what I mean by that is you have to figure out what the pay difference is. And the reason this is so important is because if you don't believe it, then you're not gonna chase it. So if you have five years of experience as a developer, Python, SQL, Java developer, and you're making 80 grand a year, you have to realize that there's people out there with five years experience making two, three, 400 grand. Am I saying that you're gonna do that and get that in the next 90 days? That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is if you're here and you see people making this, then it's reasonable for you to say, hey, I can probably make an extra 10, 20, 40, 50% just by jumping to your next job. And so yes, obviously that person with five years experience making more than 300 grand, they're probably working at a big tech company, but there's all these other companies in between your 80 grand and the 300 grand that is like ready to scoop somebody like you up, especially if you upskill and learn some data skills and pay you 20, 30, 40, 50% more. Part number three, you have to work on the right things. So in your scenario, as a developer, you probably are good at algorithms software engineering best practices so now you have to figure out where are your gaps and if you're trying to get into the data space the best place for you to start are sql data modeling and some sort of cloud we prefer aws because the data just says what the data says which is that most companies out there and most job descriptions out there are still asking for aws azure is a close second gcp is the third but at aws is by far going to give you the biggest net and the widest net to catch the most fish. 
So if you had to start to customize a plan, again, depending on your current skill set, SQL, data modeling, AWS, some sort of cloud, it's really important that you don't work on the wrong thing because again, I've seen people who are Java developers start to learn Python because they think, oh, I need to know Python in order to ace the data engineer interview. But it's like, well, if you already know Java, then you might be able to get away with just using Java on the interview because companies understand that they're basically one-to-one, -one, right? Same thing if somebody knows R, they're like, oh, I need to learn Python. But it's like, ah, it, it doesn't really matter. Let's focus on the things that you don't know, which are probably SQL, AWS, data modeling first. So part number four, how can you actually make the jump without quitting your job? And this is a common mistake we see with people early in their careers. They think they have to quit their job or they have to go get a master's degree. But the reality is you can just do it all on the side. And it probably takes one to two hours a day, 14 hours a week. It takes being consistent, but that's what it takes if you want to get to the top 1% of tech earners, which is more than three or 400K a year. And all you have to do is learn SQL 30 minutes a day, start to learn some very fancy or in-demand skills that most engineers still don't know. That could be DBT, Airflow, Kinesis, Kafka, just to name a few. And then you just start applying to a ton of data engineering jobs and you make sure that your resume is tweaked the right way. I'll put a link to a video that I talked about, which is how can you actually apply to jobs at scale effectively by actually leveraging the frameworks that we have found after sending 10,000 applications that we have found works in terms of doing it efficiently. But before you click on that video, here are my final thoughts. If you are a developer, an engineer, a Java engineer, a Python engineer, somebody who knows object-oriented programming languages already, then you are already 60, 70% of the way there. We just need to get you to believe that you're extremely underpaid, especially if you're making less than six figures, especially if you're making less than 150 and multiple years of experience. And while data engineering is your unlock and it's your way to get not just your next job, but a better job, the real unlock is first believing that you can do it, believing that you're underpaid, and then believing that, hey, even if I don't get that fancy Google job, it's okay. There's a ton of other companies in between that will pay you what you deserve and what you know you're worth. So if you're ready to start building and applying to a ton of jobs eventually, then click on this next video where we go over the best tactics for you to scale your applications and really apply effectively. And if you like this video, please subscribe, share, like, follow, comment, do whatever you gotta do so that I can keep making videos like this and helping people in tech earn the compensation they know they truly deserve. Cheers.